Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how to upgrade uh, the firmware on a Mediasonic Homeworks HW180 STB. It's a set-top box that's a digital tuner as well as a uh, basic DVR and multimedia player. Uh, actually a very interesting device and I'm going to do a full review of, the, of this device. Uh, but prior to doing that, the first thing I want to do is actually upgrade the firmware on the device so that it works at, you know, to its best uh, ability. So uh, as, as you know, with most uh, electronic devices, they get updated on a regular basis, uh, you know, not most, but a lot, and have firmware updates when that happens. This device is no different. So here it is. Um, I bought it at Amazon. It's uh, for about $29. It was a really good deal. I'll put the link for it in the video description below and the links for all this stuff in the video description below. But regardless, um, what you're going to need to do this to upgrade the firmware on this device is to actually, you're going to need a small USB thumb drive. This is an 8 gig thumb drive. You don't need anything bigger than that. And of course, you're going to need the set top box. And here you see on the back that it has a USB port. So we'll be putting the firmware on this uh, USB thumb drive, uh, plugging it into the back of the um, actual SDB or the uh, Homeworks uh, uh, device. And then we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware. But uh, uh, first step in doing this, you need to get the firmware. And unfortunately, Homeworks doesn't make that too easy. Uh, they've actually, uh, you need to request a firmware upgrade from them. So uh, the way you do that is you go to the MediaSonic uh, forum. And it's like they're up, it's like they're, there's uh, support forum. And here you can get the uh, email address. And what you do is you take a picture of the box and then send them an email requesting the actual firmware. Now the picture is not just of the box. You need to take the picture of the serial number on the box and that also has the version number of your box. So basically they don't want you to uh, flash the wrong firmware into the device and actually, you know, uh, brick it. So uh, in order not to do that, they request that you send them an email with a picture of the serial number and because that also includes not just the serial number but the uh the version of the stb that you have and then they email you a uh, file the appropriate firmware file now i've done that already and you can see the email here with the picture of the box and the serial number of course i blurred out all the uh, pertinent information uh, but regardless they sent me a link uh, sorry they sent me a, an attached file uh, 3042k and that is the a zip file with the actual firmware on it and the actual um, uh, email address that you're going to need to go to is called support at mglobal.net and I will include that in the video description below as well and as well I'll also include a link to the uh, PDF of the uh, uh, user manual uh, which also has these instructions in it but Regardless, I will walk you through them. So I'm going to assume that you've sent the email. I'm going to assume that you've gotten the 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 uh, attached um, uh, sorry zip file with the firmware in it. And then uh, after that, uh, I'm going to assume that you've downloaded it to your computer. Uh, those are all things you should be able to do quite simply just by double clicking on the file or downloading the file from your email. Um, and after which. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to extract it. So I'll show you how to extract the file. And I've got mine on a download directory under a MediaSonic um, uh, folder. So you can put it wherever you'd like. When you download it, you just remember where you downloaded it to. Uh, a lot of people put it on desktops. I like putting my stuff in the download directory. It makes sense, you know. And I've got it, like I said, under a MediaSonic folder. And you can see here that it's a zip file. Well, you can't actually do anything with a zip file until you extract it. So uh, you can see here, I'm using Windows 10. And when you click on the uh, zip file, it says, or it gives you the option to uh, top here to extract it. So I'm just going to click on extract here. Then it's, uh, it gives you another option here, extract all. That's what you want to do. And I'm just going to go with the defaults here, which will make it extracted to the same folder that I have it in right now. So We'll extract that file 
and it opens up a, a sub window with a file in it. Uh, and if you go back to the actual folder where you uh, saved the original file, you'll see that now there is a folder named exactly the same as your zip file was without the extension. And one of the files you'll see has a zipper on it, and the other one doesn't. So we're going to go to the one without the zipper on it, and we're going to double click that and open it. And there you can see a USB upgrade all flash bin. That is the firmware file that we're going to use to uh, uh, update the uh, SDB or the set top box. And I'm going to take my uh, thumb drive here, my 8 gigger, plug it into my laptop. There we go. And uh, there's something on it. Now, when you get uh, a thumb drive to do this, make sure that it's formatted fully and clean. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, you can see here that it's my D drive, but there's stuff on it. I don't want anything on it. You want it blank, blank, blank. So right click it and choose format. And you can go with a quick format or you can go with, uh, I would, I don't recommend the quick format. Uncheck the quick format, do a slow format. It's only an eight gig drive. Let it format the whole drive and it will check for errors and make sure that everything is, is uh, formatted correctly. Understand that if something goes wrong, when you're doing this firmware upgrade, that's it. The box will no longer work. So you don't want to end up in a, in a situation where you have a brick device. So number one, make sure you use a reliable USB thumb drive. Number two, make sure you fully format it. So we're, we're going to do that right now. I'm using all the, form, all the format defaults except quick format. I took that off. So click start and click OK. Now this would take a little longer than it usually does with a quick format because it's doing a full, uh, complete format. So I'll pick it up when it's done and we'll continue on from there. Well, that took much longer than I thought, but regardless, it was well worth it because now I know that the format is actually uh, good and the thumb drive is working okay. So here I can just hit okay. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention here that I didn't mention when I was doing it. It does need to be formatted FAT32, but that's the default for Windows 10 anyway. So your thumb drive must be formatted in the file system FAT32. So we've got it formatted. We can close this out now. We've got the flash bin over here, the USB upgrade uh, flash bin that we uh, extracted earlier on. So we're just going to right click that, choose copy, go to our USB drive, and which is empty, of course. And here we're going to right click again and choose paste. And that'll paste the uh, three gig um, file into, sorry, the three meg file into the bin file into the actual USB thumb drive. Uh, next thing we need to do is right click the USB thumb drive down here and choose eject. So we're going to do that. And when it's ready to be taken out, your computer will tell you it's safe to remove the hardware now. So we're going to do that. It's removed. Next thing we're going to do. Uh, let's take that thumb drive, put it in the back of the actual um, SDB or set top box and uh, then go through the process of uh, upgrading the firmware. All right, got my FAT32 formatted USB thumb drive. Uh, it's got the bin file on it, so we're ready to go on updating the firmware on this uh, device. Now, the one thing that they do specify in the email that isn't on the on online instructions is that you should disconnect the uh, antenna uh, connection from the back of the machine so the back of the S SDB or set top box so disconnect your antenna from it the RF in so there's no antenna going into the actual um, device and when you turn it on and it boots up you'll get this screen which is says no signal no big deal there don't worry about it uh, that's normal when you take off the uh, antenna then we're gonna hit the menu button and as I said, make sure that you get the USB thumb drive in the back of the unit plugged into the USB uh, port. I do. I'm in the menu here and we automatically defaults the program. I'm going to scroll over to the uh, gear button or the system uh, menu. Then we're going to go down to software update. Now, again, your thumb drive should be formatted FAT32 and there should be only one thing on it and that is the bin file and that's it. No folders, nothing. Just the bin file. So here we go. We're going to hit the software update. Then you get USB upgrade. It looks like the only option. And 
then it goes looking for the drive for the flash upgrade bin and there it is so usb upgrade so here we're going to hit the, uh, okay again it says please wait screen goes blank for a second and then you get upgrading software please do not turn off 44 percent. so everything's working exactly as it should at this moment so just be patient here it says after it reboots that you will have to reset the uh, values like your daylight savings time and what your time zone is uh, and then you're also going to have to rescan your uh your your channels it just finished upgrading there and now it's obviously rebooting There's your home or your start screen. And God willing, everything went right. Yep, it says no signal. So that's good. That's normal at this point because uh, I don't have any uh, antenna plugged in and you shouldn't either. So here we go to the menu. I'm going to go back to the gear setting over here. And here we're going to go down to the information uh, menu. And there you can see that my uh, version now is 12.3. And uh, when I got it first, it was 12.0. So it has been update, updated. Uh, that's the software version. You can't, I don't believe you can update the, the hardware version. It's, it's hardware. So at this point, you've got your uh, SDB fully, fully uh, um, upgraded to its latest version, depending on the one you had and the file they sent you not necessarily going to be 12.3 if you have an older uh, sdb it's going to be a different file or if you have a different one it's going to be a, a different uh, version but uh, again contact the support at uh, mediaworks get the right file and then follow my procedure here now the next thing you're going to do is go i'm going to exit out of here and you're going to have to reset everything up so you're going to have to do the uh, channel search again so you know Go to, go to the channel search, do an auto search, off you go. Uh, if you want also, uh, go to the, uh, exit out of here, go to the time, change your time zone to the correct one. Uh, uh, you know, it reset all that for me. So I'm gonna do the channel search next and uh, move on. Now, that's how you do a firmware upgrade on the Homeworks uh, MediaSonic. This is the uh, HW180 STB. Uh, and I suggest that you do this first thing, as soon as you get it out of the box, um, you know, I mean, you can use it, no problem. You probably want to use it. You'll be, you know, excited to use it, but email the uh, MediaSonic people and get, uh, you know, send them the serial, take a picture of the serial number, the one on the box, so on a sticker on the box and request that they send you the latest firmware for it. And then they'll send it to you and then follow these uh, instructions and you'll be done. Okay, that's it for my video. If you like this video and it helped you out in some way, click on the thumbs up or like button right down at uh, the bottom right. And uh, somewhere on this screen here, there'll be a picture of me uh, to subscribe to my channel if you want to see f uh, future videos on, you know, like subject matter or, you know, other videos that I do, which are DIY as well. But I will be doing more OTA uh, videos. And uh, I believe my next one will be on antennas. But regardless, uh, you know, if you liked it, down on the bottom right, uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel, there's a link here on the screen. Just click on that and you'll be subscribed to the Richard Lloyd USA channel. Once again, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.